Hello everybody, it's Lynn the Leather Bag Lady. How are you all today? It's uh, Wednesday, hump day, as they say here in Canada. I don't know if they say that everywhere else, anywhere else, I don't know. Date night, hump day, I don't know. Whatever Wednesday means to you, happy Wednesday. Hope you're all doing well. It is almost quarter to three, so I've been out and about. I got to stay out of the stores. It's a little crazy. Um, not finding that much great stuff, actually. I have not found one Roots bag, which, um, yeah, kind of frustrating. So anyway, despite that, I have found some good stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff that needs a little bit of rehab. So that definitely seems to be the path that I'm going down. Um, not that I've actually moved forward with much of the rehab stuff. I don't know, I guess I'm a little chicken. I'm, when I procrastinate, and I think I've mentioned this before, it's not from a place of laziness, it's from a place of fear. So I am so excited about the rehab path that I'm hoping to go down. I don't want it to be a big fat fail. So, and I don't know why it would be a fail, but um, I'm watching more of the Angelus uh, YouTube channel and I think it's pretty clear I need to get a dollar. I think that's what they call it. It's, um, it, ta it brings the uh, paint down because it, it's, it's got quite a gloss to it. And um, not a lot of the leather bags have a sheen or not that much of a sheen. So looks like I'm going to be ordering some more stuff from Amazon. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to be broke. I mean, a broke ass bitch as Miss Philly calls herself. So anyway, let's get to the bags that I have to share with you today. Now these three I got yesterday and uh, may have shown a couple of them to you already. I get too excited. I guess I shouldn't, eh? Because then it's just kind of a repeat, but I get too excited. So bag number one, I think I did show you this one yesterday. And I will say that I was a little puzzled that there's always a story. Leather bag lady, there's always a story. Oh, I need to take my uh, hearts down, I guess. I just noticed that over my shoulder. Anyway, um, this is a vintage Aldo, 80s, I would say, um, and the reason I say that is the color wave is very, very 80s, and Aldo hasn't done leather in a very, very, very long time. Look at my nails. I have not had time to do... This stuff seems to be damaging my nails underneath, and I feel, as I digress, because I always do... I feel if I'm going to get damaged nails, I may as well just go ahead and get the gel or the, what's that other stuff? Um, gel or, what's the other stuff? Can't remember. But if they're going to get damaged, I might as well get the, what the heck is that stuff called? There's gel, shellac, that's it. Um. I don't know. This didn't even last a week. If I get gel or shellac, it's a good two weeks. And then every time I do it, I'm only doing it once instead of babying them and all the rest of it. I think that's probably what I'm going to do. But anyway, back to the bag. The hand, the straps on this bag kind of puzzled me a little bit. This, this era of these bags is usually a very exaggerated shoulder strap, like quite long drop. And this kind of was a bit weird. And then when I was cleaning it and conditioning it this morning, early, early this morning, I noticed that there were some holes that didn't match up. And initially I thought the strap was broken. And I was like, ah, shit. Because, I mean, I don't sell anything that's that broken anyway. And then I noticed it was the same on the other side so this bag has been customized whoever owned this bag has gone to a shoemaker who's done a really good job the holes don't match up but there isn't they've they've stitched it in somewhat of the same fashion 
as the other side. Now, if it had been me, I would want I would have wanted it to mirror the other side, but to be fair, I didn't notice it right away either. So the strap is in, is perfect. There's no it's not loose or anything like that. It is a little raw on the end where uh, the shoemaker, cobbler, whoever cut it, but they have done the exact same stitch pattern and it's solid. It's not going anywhere. So that's the kind of conundrum with this beautiful little bag. So it's a little wider across the bottom than it is the top. It's about an inch, half an inch on each side, narrower. Um, and then it's got a nice gusset. The leather is just beautiful. And I conditioned the crap out of it yesterday. May need another go round. I bought a new, um, let me just get it for you. I bought a new leather conditioner, but I still can't seem to get my head around not washing the bag first. Now, I know I had my little incident with my I'm not a follower. I don't know who the heck that person was um, who told me that ah, who told me that saddle soap was bad for the bags. Well, you know what? I really think it comes down to personal taste because um, there is a gentleman. It's called the Elegant Oxford, and he deals with um, high, high-end men's shoes. And he does uh, bespoke. Doesn't seem to be a word that she used very much here, but in England, bespoke is custom. So he does custom finishes on um, new shoes, thrifted shoes, whatever shoes. The Elegant Oxford, it's really, really interesting to see the finish that he puts on these shoes. And yesterday I watched him do a Kenneth Cole gentleman's attache case briefcase messenger bag whatever you want to call it and he saddle soaped the crap out of that thing beetles beetles leatherworks he uses saddle soap from time to time um i'm going to continue using saddle soap i'm sorry i don't understand how a this is absorbing this i used to have a horse i think you know that and all my products were, were absorbing. So I understand this brand. I know this brand. I know the longevity of this brand. So therefore, I trust this brand. So it's just a cream. And it's not as good as the Chamberlain's, I feel. But uh, not every bag needs as intensive of a treatment as the Chamberlain's leather milk. Excuse me. So this is going to maybe help. Uh, my products spread a little more and I have just been using my fingers and I mean I literally use that little corner for that whole bag and another bag that I'm going to show you today so I don't know I don't I can't understand putting a conditioner on top of something that hasn't been cleaned I don't know I guess maybe old school I don't I don't to me it has to be cleaned there's a film there's grease there's you know years of buildup of dust of grime of salt of whatever you got to get that off before you put a conditioner on it anyway that's just my opinion that's just my history with taking care of leather and yeah i've listened to some of the naysayers and i've assessed it i mean if i get a chanel bag am i going to put you know, saddle soap on it, maybe not, but there's no Chanel bags coming in my world anytime soon. I guess I shouldn't say that, but no, there isn't. Even my Louis Vuitton, uh, the uh, monogram, I would use this on it. Like, what the heck? So anyway, I, that's my latest uh, absorbing uh, leather. It does say it lifts grime and whatever, but I don't know. I just don't, it does make sense to me. So back to the bag. So this bag has a zipper compartment on the back. How far down does it go? It goes to about here. And then you lift the little top and you've got two compartments. 
Uh, one is just a compartment and this one has the Aldo. Does it say where it was made? Nope. And a zipper compartment. There is a little bit of glue bleed through which seems to happen all over the place. And there is a little bit of uh, separation there. I'm going to uh, re-glue all that. It's not, the stitching is perfect. If you can see, there's no, it's just they've left a little lip. And that's where the leather, see this hasn't come apart. It's just where the burnishing has come away. So I'm going to uh, glue it and I'm going to reburnish it. So anyway, so that's my first bag. This nice little Aldo. It'll fit in the crook of your arm. And, uh, and there we go. So obviously whoever owned this before preferred the little um, top handle. So next bag. I love this bag. Love it. 70s, 70s, 70s. I, nothing on this hardware says brass, but I'm pretty sure it's all solid brass. It's, it's quite, the, the metal is quite uh, weighty. So shoulder for sure, a higher sitting crossbody for sure. And again, I'm not a tiny girl. Come on now. We all know that by now. And um, nice big gusset. There is, there is some scratches. I've done a little bit of work on this bag already this morning. But look at this cool thing. The zipper has a little um, flap that goes over it. Details. We talk about this all the time. Details, details. But just, uh, that's the back. Just, a, there is the most faint odor. I'm not, a, I'm not into odors, but this bag was so cool that I thought, you know what? Once you wear it, once you, you know, kind of expose it to the scents that are in your world, your home, your closet, um, I'm sure it will, it, like you can't even really smell it from the outside. It's just the inside. It smells a bit, not musty, like it's a vintage bag. And that's the, does the interior come out? Yeah. So the interior is just this kind of cool fabric. There is a zipper compartment, obviously no phone compartments. This is from the 70s. There's no way there was phones back then, or if they were, they were a bazillion dollars and none of us could afford it. So... That is bag number two, and it's got this kind of, it's, it's like a textured butterfly, I'm going to say this is, but it's, it's a love, very boho, very boho, hippie, that's the vibe I get from this bag, love it, love it, love it, love it, and then last but not least is this cool little cat. Now, I don't get a lot of red. I don't find a lot of red. So when I get red, I will pick it up unless it's an absolute disaster. So this little bag is made in Canada. It is obviously leather. I, I don't pick up anything pleather. Or if I pick up anything fabric, it'll be like a Laura Ashley. Um, I'll show you. I, I've got a perfect example. So it's got a couple of uh, compartments inside. There's the separator there. Um, it is a shoulder strap. It, I don't know, there, there is a snap there, but nothing comes apart, or does it? Oh, it does. There you go. So you could make, oh, look at that. You could make it uh, a little top handle. Now, there is a little issue with this. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. This, okay, if I open it up, maybe that's easier. So, made in Canada. There's your two compartments. I don't know if you can see that. Zipper right here. So, this little, this little ridge is just, you, I don't even think you can see it. 
it's just gaping a little bit here it's not going anywhere it, oh see there you go it'll it'll lift a little bit but it really has nothing to do with the bag it's just there for aesthetics nothing is attached to it like this is free standing it, it's not um, I don't know I just like I said if I get red um, I'm gonna pick it up and it's been priced accordingly for a little bit of something um, like I said it it just it's just such a neat bag I, I wonder if you could uh, crimp these two but I would hate to damage this because it's in such perfect condition it's it looks just the same as it does on the other side so I don't know there is a little little bit of, of damage there a little bit of wear but it's such a cool little bag that you can either wear shoulder or you can shorten that up and put it in the crook of your arm. So that's my third my third bag. So I got a couple of things to uh, chat to you about. Let me just go and get that floral. Um, so this is the kind of thing that I will pick up. Like, this is very Laura Ashley. This doesn't have a brand in it. It's just, I really like the floral print. It's basically brand new. And I I wouldn't, cons I don't know if this is vintage or not. I haven't listed it. It's in my other stash. But that's kind of what I mean. Normally, if I pick something up like this, this would all be leather. But um, this is just sitting back there waiting for the world to not be so crazy anymore. And then I can go back to doing my pop-up shops and have this stuff for sale. Um, that's the first thing. Now, one of my subscribers asked me to talk about how I take my photographs. So there's a story. There's always a story. You know me. So you know that I love Louis Vuitton. And I have, on occasion, watched some of the designer markets that are held in, uh, I don't know if it's Hong Kong, China, I don't want to uh, be politically incorrect with regions and all, I don't know anything about anything in that regard. All I know is there are these amazing, amazing markets where there is a table with a mountain of Louis Vuitton. There's Chanel, there's all the super brands. And I mean, they're not, they're cheaper than they would be retail, but they're still fairly expensive. And there are a number of YouTubers out there who have traveled to these markets and they've done a, a YouTube video or two. So I went on a couple of websites just to see what the prices were like. I really have no interest in dealing with super brands like that because A, I don't want to get into authenticity. B, I don't want to uh, hold on to things. I mean, I'm a long tail seller. I don't care if there's stuff sitting in my uh, Etsy shop for a year or whatever. I'm always going to be adding and, you know, you never know when somebody comes across something that they like. So I'm quite happy for it to sit there. I have the space to store it, albeit it disrupts, you know, my house and it being a house as opposed to a live work space. But that's okay. That that's I've got the space and I'm here by myself. So who cares? Um, so I went on these websites and... There were, I don't know, I went to university in the, well, even just five, six years ago, I went back to Brock to the library. And there's little cubicles that you can study in so that you've got a little bit of privacy. There was a room full of little cubicles like that, that literally were light boxes. So it was... So what I did was I created my own, and I'm sure you've seen this in the background. 
So I went to the dollar store and I got the, uh, what's it called? Craft board. Ross Elmer's, there's the label right there. $1.50. So I went and I got one, two, three, four sheets and I cut it to what I thought was a reasonable size. I just taped it all together. This is so beat up, I need to get another one now. So what I do is I my table's right here. I sit it on my table. I'm restricted a little bit by how uh, the daylight is because I, I don't have lights. I do have them, but setting them up and taking them down, I'm not really good at that stuff. So usually between, I would say, 11 and 2 or 3, um, it's quite bright in front of my house. Like you can, you can see the... the you know, the brightness coming in on this one side of me. So I set this up and I put the bag inside it and I just take my pictures. So it's like my own little light box. And that's how I take my pictures. Now, I'm only photographing purses and book bags, shoes, occasionally wallets, that kind of thing. So that size works for me. Um, would I like a dedicated space? Yeah, probably, but I don't know what it is. I'm not a basement person, not that I have a basement, but if I did, I wouldn't be down there doing any of this. I want to be up where my TV is. I watch my Joe Rogan, who I, nah, I'm not really liking his podcast so much now that he's gone to, I don't know whether it's because he's gone to Texas and his buddies, like when he had his, you know, sober October and all his buddies and they would just have a laugh. I don't know. It's not the same, I feel. But anyway, I digress. It's me. That's what I do. So um, that's my light box. So hopefully that kind of sheds some light on what it is I do with uh, or how it is that I, I take my pictures. So that's me. Um, we're going for wings tonight, I think. Um, that's all my ass needs is wings. Oh my God. But anyway, that's where we're going tonight. We're going for wings to Chuggies. And uh, if we can get in, because we're still, I think it's 10 people that are allowed in uh, the restaurant. So before the lockdown, we would call ahead. We'd sit in the parking lot. Now it wasn't minus 15 when we were sitting in the parking lot. So we'll see. We'll see if that's where we end up tonight. So I think that's all I have to talk to you about. Um, got another bunch of great bags today. So I'll just uh, keep cleaning them up and putting them online. And if you see anything you like, thank you for your business. If you just want to check them out. I think I've got over 360 uh, bags now. So um, love what I do. Hope to get back to my clients sometime soon though. Um, probably, uh, I'm going to say April, May, it'll be when I get back with, uh, my clients. Uh, I'm a recreational therapist by, by trade. If, if you're new to my channel, that's what I do. Um, that's what I have a degree in is recreational therapy. I work with seniors, um, who have uh, mental health issues. They, uh, are in a facility and I go pick them up and we go have a ton of fun. And I'm very lucky because my particular clients have a budget that uh, is far in excess of what most of the uh, people at this facility have. So we get to go and do all kinds of things, go to the movies. We've been away for the weekend. Um, you know, I have my uh, space. They have, it's a couple. They have their own room, obviously. And... We went to the falls last year, uh, right before my birthday last year, and then we were going to do it again, and we all got shut down, and it hasn't been back since. So, um, anyway, that's just a little bit about me. So, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow, or talk to you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.